Okay, guys, it is Memorial Day 2023. I have a 2009 Toyota truck that I bought new. She currently has 110,000 miles on her. And um, the other day in town, my VSC check engine light came on and that little traction light came on and I couldn't figure what in the world and still don't know what's going on but uh, I live on a little island here in southwest Florida we have a problem with field mice and rats out here in these fields and uh, the little research that I have done on this supposedly some engineer with Toyota lacking wisdom and discernment thought that it would be a good idea to coat the wiring here in the wiring harness for these Toyotas with a material that attracts mice. They consider it to be food so they have a, a natural propensity or tendency to want to chew the wiring harnesses on these Tundras or Toyotas and they've been building a, a nest in my engine compartment we even chewed off a wire here um, they've chewed off the insulation there um, we've got uh, I've got I've got insulation missing here and I have damage here uh, on this insulation and the only thing I can see to do, when that little VSC light comes on, sometimes it is your gas cap. But I don't think that's the situation here. And I'm going to have to start doing some searching. Um, nothing that I've found on the internet has been really helpful other than taking it into Toyota. Some suggest that this is covered under warranty. Well, but I've got a substantial deduction in my insurance. So I'm going to have to look through here and see if I can find any wires that have been chewed. Nobody on the internet wanted to point out any wiring that might reference the, the problems that I'm having on my dash up there. So I'm going to take a look, and guys, if I come across something, I'll share that with you. But those of you who are suffering from chewed wiring on your Toyotas, you're not alone. Okay, guys, I, I went over my Tundra top to bottom, even climbed up under it. I checked the wires leading to all the wheel sensors. I checked every wire that I could see that was visible. Not a single wire appeared to be compromised, uh, at least by chewing. Uh, so I, I relented and went down to AutoZone. I want to say kudos to Aguirre at the AutoZone just outside of Pine Island, Florida at uh, Pine Island Road and Burt Store Road. That poor guy went out in the heat and he got down on his hands and knees with that... Uh, processing unit that he has, an analyzer, plugged it into my truck. This is what he came up with. Um, I don't know if this is going to come out on the video. I'm taking it off the screen. He sent it to me via email. Um, it says that my powertrain system produced the primary trouble code, P as in Paul, 033D as in David. Knock sensor for circuit high input. Okay, whatever the heck that means. And then the next one is my anti-lock brake system produced a primary trouble code C is in Charles 1201 engine control system malfunction. My most likely fix, and this is not the best analyzer, it's one of the cheaper ones, but this is what it told me. First of all, it suggested I, I uh, replace the intake manifold gasket. Don't think that's the problem. But that's one of the suggestions. And uh, it says that if the gasket doesn't work, or, uh, it can cause coolant, oil, and vacuum leaks. All right. Additional code details. 
powertrain trouble description, knock sensor 4, circuit high bank 2, powertrain secondary co trouble codes, P003D, P0333, P0333D, P0333. Okay. Anti-lock braking system secondary trouble code C is in Charles 1201. And it doesn't tell me anything else. So I went into YouTube and I did some research, did some reading. And uh, I smell a rat. I know I have rats in that truck out here in Florida. And they're making a home. I found a nest or two up in my engine uh, in the block area there. So I'm assuming that the, they probably got underneath my intake manifold and um, they've chewed some wires. So uh, I have ordered a wiring harness for these knock sensors. And I wanted to, I initially wanted to order the Toyota wiring harness. Hearsay has it that Toyota is being sued because whoever manufactures those wiring harnesses for Toyota has evidently made the wire out of some type of material that rats and mice sense as food. So they, they eat and chew on those wires. I'm going to take that manifold cover off and take a look at it here in a few minutes. Um, so I ordered mine from Dorman, a company called Dorman, D-O-R-M-A-N on Amazon. I'll give you the parts number and show that to you here in a few minutes. Okay, guys, this is, uh, I guess what they refer to as an exhaust manifold. This entire apparatus here on top of the motor. And supposedly, that's where this wiring harness sits up underneath there. And uh, it these plug into the knock sensors. So, uh, my, I'm guessing and betting on the fact that uh, the knock sensors themselves are still in good condition. I'm hoping. I did not buy any. And that the gasket... Uh, that seals this to the head of the engine, those gaskets are still good. I am betting money on these little wires in here having been chewed. The one that I ordered, just to see if I could bypass the problems with the Toyota, it's only $10 cheaper than the Toyota, but uh, I think maybe it's not manufactured out of rat food. And it's by Dorman, D-O-R-M-A-N. I purchased it off of Amazon. It's uh, number 926770. And it's called a knock sensor harness. If that helps you guys. 2000, 2009 Toyota Tundra. And um, 5.7 liter. So what I'm going to do is take off this uh, exhaust manifold. It looks like it's quite a chore. And uh, I will let you know uh, the size ratchets and tools that you need and uh, what all you have to take off to get this thing off. And uh, instead of you sitting here trying to watch me do it. Also, to let you know that if you want to watch somebody take it off, I know there's at least one or two good videos with people who actually know what they're doing that take this, that remove this. So if you want to watch them, that's fine too, if that helps you out. Once I get it off, I'll show you what's underneath what happened to my truck and uh, we'll go from there also guys before i get started uh just just a suggestion because it's paid off for me in the past take a plethora take plenty of photos of everything here before you get started so that if you get to a point where you're going ah, i don't remember how that goes back on you will have the photos to go back and check and it may save you a real hassle. So uh, I'm going to videotape it, video it, and I'm also going to uh, take photos. Due to my lack of mechanical skills, there is the major portion of the electrical harness that runs behind this uh, manifold. And uh, it's two points, there's two attach points back there that I cannot seem to remove or else I would take the complete manifold off. The best I can do at this point is to, is to lift it up like this. I've propped it up with a piece of wood to look under here. And I don't know if 
put the light right there. This is my problem. They chewed through the wire here. It's a black wire on this uh, on this on this unit here. So what I'm going to end up having to do is replace that, and uh, hopefully not have a repeat. But this is my major malfunction right here. What you can see the nest that they have made in here. Here's part of the nest down here on the deck. They have uh, chewed up and drug in lawn carpet that we've put underneath our shale here, underneath the shell, to keep weeds from going up between the rocks and the shell, the gravel. They've torn that off and brought it down here into the motor to make them a nest. And they have done a heck of a job. So we're going to, I've covered up the intakes and we're going to vacuum all of this out and clean it out real good, then replace those. And uh, I've cleaned up everything the best I could as far as the intakes are concerned in the, in the gasket. Okay guys, uh, unbolting, remove, or partially removing that intake manifold there. It uh, wasn't really easy, but it wasn't terribly difficult. Except for, now I have these laid out in order that I took them out. These are the bolts that actually hold that thing in place. They'll start off in the front. Disregard these arrows here. That's Amazon type stuff. Um, you'll end up taking off these two. And then you'll have four bolts going down. They'll be staggered. This last one on the left side as you're facing it, as you're facing the motor from the front, uh, it's a booger bear. It's back there behind the wiring harness. You're going to have to kind of work on that one. And they're torqued down pretty good. But you'll have the two nuts, and then you'll have four bolts. And they're all number 12s. All number 12s. I just caution you putting these back in that you have, I believe you are going into an aluminum substance. It's definitely some kind of an alloy. And uh, you don't want to over torque them and create a problem for yourself. Um, those are the main bolts. That's the main bolt that's actually holding the manifold down. You'll have a series of hoses that you're going to have to take off. There's one here that uh, uh, attaches to up here toward the uh, intake on the uh, throttle body, and uh, you don't want to take you don't want to take it down here at the bottom because you're you're below the level of your radiator and you'll start to leak. Take the upper one off. You'll see what I'm talking about when you get into it, and you won't have the problem with the leakage. There are a number of hoses that need to be pulled off. There are a number of things that are clamped to or screwed to the top of the manifold. Um, if your vehicle's anywhere near the condition that mine is in with these rats and mice, this was just full of nesting material. And here's my broken wire. There's at least one of them. I haven't taken them out yet. And uh, that's what I've purchased uh, now they're chewed all the way through. This one was completely isolated. Um, so hopefully that is the problem. And uh, I'll get those wired back in. The light, either the white or gray, whichever you purchase, as you're facing the, the, the truck, as you're facing the truck, I'm standing by the radiator looking toward the back of the truck, the lighter colored uh, receptacles will go on the left and the dark ones the dark ones will uh, go on the on the right. So you'll have the, the lighter colored over here, the darker colored over here. It's basically going to be just uh, pulling these off and replacing them. Now, since I was not able to remove the uh, manifold itself, and it's it's angled up, if I put the flashlight on, that the last receptacle is way back here in the back. That's going to be a challenge. I'll do it. It's going to be a challenge. I took the a little bolt out of this so we could get in there with the uh, the vacuum and clean all that mess out. I'm going to leave that out until I get everything threaded through because it looks like all of this goes up underneath this wiring harness. And so when I get those plugged in, uh, we'll go in here and get everything bolted back up, all of the hoses put back on, everything screwed down, and uh, we'll see if that is the problem. All right, guys, I uh, initially told you that I was just going to lift the front of the manifold and try to work in there. I just could not get the, uh, pardon me here just a second, I simply could not get this to release back here in the back. 
my wiring harness. Uh, it just it just would not release. I didn't have access to it. And let me show you what was holding me up. You guys that have a 2009 and later, seems that the earlier models didn't have this to secure. But see these two copper little holes here? There are number 10s that go in there. And um, there's a wiring harness. There's a wiring harness holder. And the problem with that being is that these are on the back of it. And uh, this one you can partially see. And once you get this manifold pulled forward, you can partially see this one. But you're going to have to work those out by hand in order to release the wiring harness. And, if, and unless you release the wiring harness, you can't get this manifold off. And uh, that probably took me an hour and a half uh, feeling back there in the blind to get those off. So that was kind of a pain, you might say. Just so that you don't make the same mistake that I made on this wiring harness here in the back. I wanted to pull this out. This is actually connected to a bracket. It doesn't pull out the... the uh, Attach point from the wiring harness itself slides out the back. So don't stress yourself over that. Don't try to pull this out with this bracket. It won't pull out. I put that string on there when it was when I wasn't able to get the manifold off in order to try to remove that clip not knowing that the clip removed from the back and not the front. Okay guys, for the record, I had to take that bracket off and get it kind of realigned after I pulled on it so much. Also, I want to make, make sure you know that these two little hoses here, they do have a bracket and it goes down into this hole here on the bracket that holds the harness. So, um, make sure you get those situated and this goes on there and this wall will go underneath here I'm going to go ahead and hook up those hoses. This should just snap in this little hole there. And it does. But those two are supposed to go right in there. Like that. Okay, they're all clipped on, and um, my recommendation to you guys is that uh, order putting this back on. There's a hose that is on the front of the manifold. I would pull it off the manifold, hook it on here first, right here on this green hose. Let it ride up, and you can hook it on after you get the manifold put on. Um, I'd go ahead and place. I'm gonna go ahead and place the manifold in in the hole here. In Okay, guys, it's getting dark. Um, I think <laughs> I have most everything uh, buttoned up and buckled up. I'm going to have to add some radiator fluid. I lost a little bit during the process. Um, that was not a, an enjoyable task. Uh, it won't be so bad if I have to do it again. I don't even know if this is going to correct the problem yet. It should correct some of it. 
We'll get in and start it up here in just a second. Go ahead and put this cover on it. All right, let's see if uh, that's our problem. Well, the check engine light is still on. I may have to reset that. I don't know. That went off as well. Let it run a second. But it looks like that maybe we've tackled the problem for today. I'll run it for a while. See if I get out of uh, limp mode. I'm not going to run it out tonight. And um, But it looks like that's taking care of the problem. Thank you guys. If the video helped you, please like it. 